Okay, what we're going to talk about today is essentially what is uh, a program, a really cool program. It's one that um, a lot of our appraisers actually refer to as well. I can tell you that um, I use this program um, across the country, so that part of it's pretty good. Um, let me, uh, okay, good. All right, I'm, I'm dialed in over here. So let's talk a little bit about this. Here, here's who we are. We always start out with this. This is my name, my phone number my email address, and then uh, we're gonna be talking today about RPR, Realtor Property Resource. Great little program. If you haven't used it before, then you're gonna love this. So, um, you know, we're gonna have conversations. It's gonna sound like legal stuff. It's not, I'm not an attorney, uh, and it's not intended to be the substitute for the advice of your broker, nor for that of your attorney. Um, and so that being said, um, SDAR doesn't really have anything to send you on this one because there really aren't any handouts, but I'm going to show you a lot of stuff that's going to get you uh, up and running pretty quick anyway. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, here's my email address. Send me an email. Um, if you are not getting uh, the newsletter, um, I put out one that is specific to the classes that I'm teaching. Um, I teach on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and so I want to make sure that you have uh, um, access to that. So send me an email, say, please put me on your list, and I'd be more than happy to do that. It only goes out once a week. I'm not going to sell it to anybody. It's going to be just between you and me. So let's go ahead and get started. And in order to do that, uh, screen sharing has stopped because I opened up another screen. Let me take us over to the program that we're in. So first of all, let me start off by saying that um, I go to the SDAR website, okay, in order to get to RPR. There's a couple of ways to get there. One of the ways is by dialing in NARRPR.com, but I always like to go into the um, SDAR website because I like to see what else is going on uh, and then just clicking on the link that takes me into the uh, into the meeting itself or into the uh, program itself. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and pull it up. Okay, here we go. So we're talking about data share. Now, what I meant to do here was to actually log out of the program and then log back in. I'm trying to see, I'm sorry, I keep switching around on you on the screen, but I'm trying to see the information on another screen as well. So, um, yep, it's got some programs coming up today. Uh, and now I'm going to come myself uh, and and where am I uh, okay well that's never good right all right so let's try this again we're gonna go to our screen <sighs> Linda okay all right um, my apologies let me find my screen and then we can move forward is that it so that's not it I hope I didn't sign out of my own program. Can you all hear me okay? Oh, there it is. Okay, there we go. All right, so I think it just distracts me that my own picture is up there. So I want to go into the RPR program. So I'm going to start over again. I'm going to go NARRPR.com, and I'm going to click on the link. Okay, and that's going to take me here. Now, uh, as I said, and I, and I apologize to you already, I've wasted five minutes of your time, and I've only got an hour to show you all this. So um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the first thing that I want you to do in the RPR program to get yourself set up. And then I'm going to show you some of the neat little uh, tools and tricks that are associated with the program. So as I have logged in, and you all have access to this program, if you are a member of the National Association of Realtors, then you have access to this. Now, people are going to tell you that it's free. It's not free. You're paying about $5 a year in your dues for it. But, um, you know, frankly, I think it's a pretty good program, probably one of the better benefits of being a member of the National Association of Realtors. So um, we've got our uh, Welcome Kevin screen. You know, I can click on these things as I go and pull, pull up, you know, the information. But here's, what, here's what's important. So I'm, let me go back to the home really quick. I want you to look over here on the right-hand side where you have this spindle. Okay, that spindle right there is your settings. Obviously, I got the same place by clicking on Welcome Kevin, but I want you to get used to doing it this way because that's the conventional way of doing things. Um, in the meantime, let me show you this page really fast. You can see that it uh, indicates to you all the properties and things that are available to them. You'll have more access to individual information about active listings when you have a membership in that um, MLS. So for example, um, we're members of several MLSs around the country. We get pretty good data. 
from those MLSs. But um, at the end of the day, if you don't have access to that MLS, it's not really going to limit you an incredible amount. So, uh, you know, hang, hang in there on that. Okay, so I've got, obviously, I've got my all properties, which is what I'm going to tell you, 80% of the stuff that's in this program, you're not going to use it. You know, some of it's cute, but, you know, at the end of the day, probably all properties is what you really want. Uh, for sale, for lease, neighborhoods, schools, market activity. I just don't know how you're going to use it. Um, I do have a list of properties that I have saved over time. Um, and again, those are, you know, that's fine. Um, I, my main search process is going to occur from this field right here. I'm going to literally type in an address. Um, and as I start to type in an address, let's type, start typing in an address. As I start to type in an address, you will see that it will give me some drop downs and give me some more options for things. So I'm going to start typing and, and notice how now it bulleted down there. There's only one building in all of, uh, of the country uh, at 2965 that starts with Mish, and that's going to be Mission Boulevard. And then I just got to know my unit number. So my unit number is number 3D, but we're going to come back to that. Um, I would click on that. I would click on search and away I would go. I can do my advanced search. Folks, again, I'm going to tell you, you're probably never going to use it. Um, there's not a whole lot in here. The problem is too much information is going to make it so that your results don't come back the way that you want them to. So I like the basic search. Um, and then I don't fill in any of this information down here. And again, I'm just telling you as a practitioner, this is what I do. And in fact, this is what Linda and I do when we're running comps on properties. We run this program when we are taking a listing to determine whether or not the value of the property, you know, what the value of the property is. Does the seller want more for the property than it's worth? Gee, there's a surprise. Um, uh, is the buyer overpaying for the property? So those are all things that we consider when we're looking at uh, running essentially what is as close to an appraisal as we're going to get, um, unless you're an appraiser. Okay, um, I like this program probably best of all of the ones that we use. Um, you know, there's others, there's Cloud CMA, there's the CMA out of your MLS, things like that. Um, but but this, the advantage to this one is that it uses data from over 300 sources. And so as a result, it tends to be more concise uh, and it uh, tends to be more, th uh, more thorough. So on the left-hand side, you can see recent properties that I have searched. And something else to consider is that these reports are only good for 30 days. So when a report's only good for 30 days, you know, it's just not going to be available here anymore. And the reason is because we really want you to run another report, all right? So if you've got a report that's over 30 days old, then that data needs to be updated. And especially if you're in San Diego County, you know, you need to make sure that you are getting uh, current data, okay? So scrolling down, you can see I've been looking, uh, we just sold a property up in uh, Idaho. We're members up there as well. Um, we had a buyer that bought a property in Twin Falls. And again, I can click on any of these and get these back. Um, but uh, you can see some of these, uh, some of the ones that we already did reports on are already off the market. You know, they're already, um, they're not pending. They just uh, decided they weren't going to sell them. So uh, here's uh, the pending one that uh, actually we have under contract. Um, and then in the middle, if you have bookmarks, go ahead and use them. On the right-hand side, how many, how many reports have we done? On the left is how many properties have we searched for, but I didn't necessarily generate a report. On the right side, I see the ones that I actually generated reports for. And again, only good for 30 days. Now, if I wanted to go see all my reports, I would click on jump to the re reports page, okay? They have a mobile version. I really like the mobile version. If you haven't tried using it, you really ought to think about it. I have it on my phone and you know, I don't just put stuff on my phone because it gets to a point where I can't find anything. Um, so I use the mobile version. Um, the nice part about it is it has this little follow me feature in it where you can literally, you know, just have it turned on. You got a client in the car with you. You're driving around the neighborhood and the client says, well, hey, what about that sign over there? How come you didn't tell me about that? You know, it's in the area that we want to be in. But unfortunately, you know, the there must be something else about the property that that uh, made it not show up in our list of homes that we're looking for, right? So for example, could be out of their price range. Most times that's what it is. Um, but when we did our, our, uh, our 
search in the multiple listing service, it might not have shown up because it might be pending or, or uh, might already be uh, sold. When I'm using my RPR, I can pull up the property while I'm standing in front of it. Again, the map's gonna follow me around. All I gotta do is click on the link and then it's going to show me the information about that particular property. We could do a whole class on the mobile version of this. Um, in fact, I think SDAR actually has one um, uh, on using the mobile version, but there's a lot of really good stuff in this program. So again, I think you should uh, take a look at it, play with it, you can't break it. It's just one of those things um, that you're just gonna have to get some experience with. So uh, date on the go, I mean, you can watch the video, do all that. Um, and then they have several different types of reports, and we're going to talk about that as well, okay? So down here on the bottom of the screen, if you don't remember what your, uh, um, your NERDS number is, you can look it up. Um, it's got a way for uh, help. I'm going to tell you something. When, when this program first came out, I jumped on it right away as an instructor because I thought, in fact, I, I was told by the, the then president of our MLS, uh, they said, you need to be teaching this program. And so I did. You know, I got in there. Not only did I, uh, um, obviously, like the program, but then I uh, became an instructor right away, certified instructor for the program. Um, and then as time has gone on, of course, like everything else now, you know, it's all about paying to be an instructor. So, um, you know, it's just not everybody's willing to do that. So down here on the bottom part, um, I, I, I like the help feature. The reason I told you that whole story was, you know, here I was getting ready to teach a class back uh, when it first came out, which has been over 10 years, I think. Uh, when it first came out and I literally uh, contacted the helpline the day before uh, Christmas. So um, I thought, wow, if they're going to be available for sure, for real, then, you know, they're not going to be available the day before Christmas. They were there and they were great. You know, it literally when I got them on the phone, I started talking with them. They were really helpful. Um, you know, they have the ability, you have the ability to call them anytime. You have live chat available. Um, and then of course you have also have the, the help button. But, but the biggest thing for me was when I got them on the phone, there were a couple of things that I had, you know, I had a pretty good handle on the product, but I but I wasn't comfortable with a couple of things. So not only they do a little mini course for me, but then they also started showing me stuff I didn't even think to ask about. So you know, again, I recommend click on the live chat. They pop up on you right away. Call them on the phone. They answer the phone. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I just think it's a good little program with great resources. So as I usually do, I go from left to right, uh, going across the page. Um, home page is the one you're on right now. Clicking it again uh, essentially does what we refer to as a refresh, right? And most of our programs are designed that way. Um, you'll find that most of the programs that we put out have five tabs across the top, much like in zip forms and some other programs. Um, so we have our results page, we have our details page, we have our reports page, um, and so, uh, and they have a little doorbell sound, which I think is the cutest thing ever. You can literally create a report and then, and then go on and do something else. And then it will, it will uh, do a little doorbell sound to let you know that the report is ready so you can come back and get it. So I just think that's uh, the neatest little thing. Um, search button. Uh, and then of course they have tutorials. Um, but I want to take you here to my, um, uh, toggle switch because, uh, um, God knows I'm going to spend some time in there and I don't want to run out of time. It's the most important thing you're going to do when you get into the program. So uh, bear with me. Click on that little toggle switch. Uh, let me see. I want to make sure you're seeing my screen. And yes, you are. Okay. Um, boom. So uh, on my little toggle switch, I can do a lot of different things. All right. So some of us have um, have been in here already, but I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I've got my profile and I've got my settings. So I'm going to deal with my profile first. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my photo. Do I like my photo? So obviously I picked a photo from you know, some handsome guy that is no relation to me at all. Um, and I put the photo up there. There's a thumbnail of it. There's the icon of it. And, and I can change it anytime and I can delete it anytime. Uh, remember that the DRE says that your photo should be within five years, um, you know, should be less than five years old. Um, that's a DRE requirement, um, truth in advertising and NAR requirement. Uh, and so uh, I encourage you to try to get that. Um, so um, I'm just kidding. Obviously, my, my picture is uh, less than five years. In fact, that picture was taken three years ago. So I guess I'm going to get ready for a photo here pretty soon. On the, to the right of that, I've got my logo. 
and I can change my logo anytime. So um, uh, Linda, in our office, you know, we have our company logo, but um, we've actually just recently changed that logo. So, you know, let's, uh, let's take a look at changing the logo. I love doing things on the fly because, you know, everybody panics when I do that because you know, I'm kind of big on the internet. I have a new internet thing that uh, is working really, really well. I'm really tickled with it. So I'm going to click on the new logo. There it is. It says, do you like it? I say, I love it. There's my new logo because uh, we, we retired our old logo. Um, and so now in a couple of minutes, you're going to see me save it. And then that's going to be the new logo that will replace what's up here. Now your broker may have already loaded a logo for you. So if you're with some of the larger companies, they may have already, you know, uh, branded themselves by doing this. Um, and if you want to change that, you'll have to talk to their IT department or talk to uh, membership at the San Diego Association and they can help you. Or you can contact the chat line, right? You can get right in here and take care of all that, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click save just because I want to save that logo. And of course, the proverbial please wait. And so we'll wait for a couple seconds here and then we'll do some more stuff. Okay, thanks for updating your profile. I want to go back to that page. Okay, I don't want to close it. I want to go to the home. Well, of course, it took me right back there. A couple little quirky things, but that's okay. We can live with that. We'll click on settings again. Take us back to our page. There's the logo saved in there for you. So I'm going to go down the page and then I'm going to come over here to the right hand side and talk to you a little bit about that. So in going down the page, obviously I have my first name. I have my last name. I've added my JD. I've added my credential to my last name. It's okay. Um, it is, uh, you know, if you have designations at Linda Hernandez, you've got a bunch of designations, go ahead and add, add them to it. Okay, I am a broker associate for my own company. You all know that Linda Dryley is my broker um, and I am brokered in several states, but uh, you're gonna see that I pretty much my focus, my, my central core business is in San Diego. So here's my office information down here. I can change this information if I want, the information on the right hand side, I am not able to change. That is loaded automatically by uh, membership at San Diego. So they do that automatically for you. And remember that the DRE requires that you advertise your affiliation with a broker and, and among other things that we're going to discuss in just a second. And so you got to have the address, you got to have the phone number, all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So um, and then if I go down here, I can click on view the office profile as provided by the brokerage because your brokerage, again, may have provided you with your logo and, and may have some input into what this looks like. So um, obviously I'm fine with all that because that is my information. So that's good. Um, so right here, it's been provided by your brokerage and is not uh, edible. You can't eat it. So uh, phone number. Um, so I put down my work number 509-7500. That is my 24 hour a day access number. Um, I am extension number four. Um, so I could add that. If I want to add an additional phone number, I click on add more. I click on one of these things. Uh, you might put your your uh, mobile number in there. That's really kind of your decision to do. Um, I don't do that because I'm not a big texter. I just want people to be able to get a hold of me. Um, fax machine, don't use it. So we don't put it in here. Uh, the only faxes I ever get anymore are going to be the faxes that are um, related to uh, travel agencies or, you know, getting my name in who's who. So um, my email address, I use my main email address, Kevin at BerkRealEstateConsultants.com. So fill these in as you go. I could have additional emails and I don't have to click on the button. I can just do this and I can see that there are other emails. I might have an assistant, add the assistant's email to it. Um, my website, pretty, pretty standard. That's my office website. Um, notice it matches my email address. Um, but I could have other uh, email addresses in there. I could have my own personal email address. Uh, or my own personal website, all those things are also possibilities, okay? So you can do a lot with the program. Just remember that, you know, we like to try to keep the, the, pro, the uh, front page of the ultimate report clear. We want to make sure that we don't you know, put too much stuff on there. So here's my, we need, we need your MLS or CIE uh, to show up your current listings, add as many as you like. Um, and so in my case, the only one I have loaded here is the San Diego uh, County uh, website, uh, County um, information for the MLS here. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and I loaded that. I could go in and load the other states where I'm also a broker, but uh, um, I 
think I've taught some of you before that once you're a broker, there's just nobody else that will take you as anything other than a broker. They want you to be a broker in those other states as well. It's not really that challenging, but it's uh, interesting. So, okay, that being said, uh, once you type in your MLS number, it verifies that information. You don't have to put your password in there or anything. Um, and so, um, you know, you just, it verifies it. It's all good. As it says right here, uh, the green check mark means you're good to go. Um, it's live in RPR, so you'll experience the full site functionality within the area of the MLS. So again, I could go ahead and add other MLSs if I wanted to do that. Um, Deidre, a good question. What is SPN? Uh, I was having a mental block while I was going through it. That is your uh, San Diego MLS, and I can't think offhand um, what that stands for. But when you go into your... Um, your um, zip forms, you'll see the same thing. When you try to do MLS connect, you'll see SDPN. Um, and so um, I'll think of it and then I'll, 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 I'll let you know. Thank you, Deidre. Um, obviously, I don't want to hit this X over here because then I got to start my process over again. Um, but I may come back later on and add a couple of other MLSs that I uh, have to be a member of. Um, listing data. So um, you can uh, view active listings and off-market data based on what's above here. Um, and then my license numbers, you'll see I have multiple license numbers in California. Um, don't ask me why, I don't know. My license number is 01000175. Um, I guess I could put in my brokerage license number. I think I might have been doing a, a class for RPR at one point. So we just made up some fictitious numbers, but now I'm worried about um, deleting them. So uh, <laughs> I may lose a license, right? So um, I can add other license numbers. In fact, you know what I would, I would go back in here and I would add, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, Virginia one, the Idaho one, whatever. I can add those license numbers as well if I, you know, want bragging rights about that, okay? Um, the, uh, I can have an assistant user. Um, not a bad idea. What happens is when you log in, your assist, uh, when you're, you, you add your assistant user, your user gets an email that says that they've been invited to work in the program. But again, they're only invited in there to be an assistant. They're not in there to be an actual agent. So any reports or anything that they generate will have your contact information all over them. The assumption is that they are not members of the MLS and that they are not NAR members. Okay. So that's the assumption. All right. So um, if you have an assistant, I recommend that you use this part of the program. I think it's a pretty good one. Um, down here on the bottom, new, new subscriptions and privacy policy. So um, I do like to receive RPR updates and news. I don't know why I don't other than the box is no longer checked. Um, and then I can hit save. Um, which would save all the information I've done so far. But before I do that, I want to take you up here to the top, talk about a couple of things up here. So I'm going to start off with um, obviously my, my um, in order to access the program, I need to know my name. And I always tell people, if you don't remember your name, then talk to your broker. Your broker can tell you what your name is. Um, and then I need to have my NERDS number, my uh, National Realty Database Systems number. See, Deidre, I've got that down. Um, anyway, uh, so my ID number is there. Um, I sign in as Kevin at Kevin M. Burke. Now I can go ahead and change that to Kevin at Burke Real Estate Consultants.com. I don't give people the Kevin M. Burke address because they frequently forget to put the M in there in the middle. And uh, then they just put in KevinBurke.com and it goes to a cellist in Oregon who does not forward emails to me. Um, could be a nice guy, I don't know. Um, I can change my password at this point. Um, there are going to be some criteria associated with the password. I'm going to obviously have to confirm it. Um, time zone that I'm in is obviously the Pacific time zone, but I can click the drop down and go to any of the other time zones. You know, take a vacation for a day, go to the East Coast, go to Hawaii, whatever. Okay, just remember whatever time zone you put in there is going to impact what the reports look like. Um, what do I have connected? Well, I've connected my, uh, um, my uh, ZipForms program to this program. Okay, so um, I can actually, I have single sign-on to go back and forth to between either one of them. Uh, and uh, then I have um, RPR mobile access. So they're gonna give you a limited number of devices that, that are going to be accessible for mobile access. And so obviously I have a lot of different uh, devices. Um, some of these I can probably delete. 
um, but I, I want to be cautious about doing that. So, uh, for example, probably the one from 2015 doesn't exist anymore. Um, probably the one from 2016, if you all see what I'm saying. Just be careful because once you delete them, you got to enter them in again. But the way you're going to enter them in is pretty easy. You're going to use, see, I obviously use the mobile version of this. So you'll go in, you'll pull up the mobile version, and you'll, uh, and you'll uh, get signed into it. It'll ask for permission to save it, and you say yes. Okay, so uh, update frequency is, uh, you know, every three months. Um, so once you log in here, it says it right here. Let me, um, let me get this, uh, see if it's going to work. Once you log into your program, you're good for up to three months. Strong suggests you change your password, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, all right, everybody good with all that? I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to click on save. They are not going to blast you with uh, RPR reports, you know, every day. Uh, they just don't do that. Um, I got one yesterday, first one I've probably gotten in a couple of months. Um, but um, sometimes they have really good information that comes out that's uh, really helpful. So I'm looking, we did the save, I'm going back up, I'm noticing that my logo has changed, but the logo up here is not. So that tells me I'm probably going to need to go in and change the, um, the logo information as provided by the brokerage. Um, and it uh, looks like uh, they've got some of that in there. Okay, so is everybody good with all that? We did the save, um, and now we're looking good. Is everybody ready to run a report? I'm assuming that you are uh, not hearing anything to the contrary. Let's see who my uh, victims are right now. Homer, welcome back, sir. Uh, James, good to see you again. And uh, Seraphine, always good to see you. Thank you. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to go back to the homepage. I'm going to run a report. I'm going to show you the stuff that you're actually going to use in this um, versus the, all the other stuff that they give you that you're able to use. Um, as I said earlier, go in, play with the program. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with this. Um, they have a commercial section for you to get into. Um, if you go up here, you can go to commercial section. You'll find they have some really good data tools. So for example, uh, data tools, uh, if you're the broker, uh, Linda Hernandez is the broker running the company. Um, you know, you can go ahead and there are separate tools that are available for you that are of no charge. Um, uh, victims. <laughs> James, you got that right. Uh, okay. Uh, steps to get your logo branded to the RPR, contact membership. Um, but um, you can do your own. Um, I'm sorry. I just, I just closed your window. Hold on a second here. Let me see. Boy, I got a slow internet today. I don't know why. So Greg, Gregory. So um, in order, I'm going to go back to my spindle really quick. So when I go to my spindle, I can actually change my logo and I can also change my picture. So I don't know why I've got a slow internet now all of a sudden um, running, a, running a, a gigabyte of internet here and uh, God knows I got enough devices on it. All right. Uh, so uh, Gregory, when I went to this page here, my settings page, um, waiting for it to load. This is really wild. We were doing pretty good there a minute ago. So I'm gonna, right here, I can change my logo. You see where I'm pointing right here, I can change my logo. Over here, I can change my photo. So when I did make those changes and I save them, it did not change this. So in order for me to change this, I'm going to have to contact the association. Um, I probably should show you the settings panel as well, um, but uh, I can change all those other things. So your broker, those would have been loaded. Obviously it's my brokerage with Linda, but, but um, we, um, uh, we loaded that uh, logo up some time ago, so I'm going to need to change that. Um, as the agent now, or in my case, broker associate, I can't change that logo. That's the logo that appears on the top of all the reports. So um, that one, I'm going to uh, thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Gregory, I'm going to get a hold of them and get that all fixed. So settings, um, this was right next to profile. These are all the things that uh, you can do. Um, with your with the things that you can do with your settings and really what they did is just move a couple of fields over from what was on the old page. So for example, my home areas, obviously Del Mar for me, La Jolla, Rancho Santa Fe, San Diego, Carmel Valley. Um, I can add more. I don't know if there's a limit. I don't think that there is. I've never encountered it. Um, but frankly, I'll tell you, I don't know what it does. I mean, I've just never had an experience with it that, that it did anything. Um, 
Uh, you can see that uh, my commercial settings I've got recently sold no longer than 180 days. Um, new listings are not new unless they're less than 30 days. In my residential, sold 180 days, but you'll find that in this economy, especially when I do my uh, CMAs uh, or when I use my RPR, um, we actually require the RPR in our file. So um, we, we require it on the listing side, we require it on the buyer side. So uh, we require it in the file, but I'll frequently change that 180 days down to 90 days uh, because the market is just that hot and it's that hot again right now. So uh, all those people that you had sitting on the fence that were waiting for, you know, the market to drop, you know, I, I, I hate to tell you, but across the country, we're seeing, and I think over a 20% increase in the numbers of transactions. So those are pretty significant numbers. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our, our um, homepage here. Um, again, I clicked on the link. So we shouldn't be more than an hour doing that. Mm -hmm. This is why I have a very fast internet connection. Okay, so from my homepage, what I wanna do is I wanna go in here and I'm gonna type in an address of a property. We're just gonna make one up. We're gonna type in an address and uh, we're going to uh, uh, wait for the program to load. Oh my God. I'm going to be old and gray. Okay. Uh, I've got a question. No, I don't have a question. Okay. No question. Um, all right. So, okay. So going back to my page here, why is it doing this? Linda. Okay. We're spinning. Sorry. It happens. I don't know why it happens, but it happens. I just yesterday, evening got the fastest internet connection I can possibly get for residential purposes. And, and here we are. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is uh, just so you know, in advance, because it'll probably just be a little slow for you to see what I'm doing, but, but I'm going to, in the address field of things, I'm going to start typing in my address like I did earlier. And I'm going to, maybe if I do this, some of these other things up here, I'll get rid of some of these other links and then maybe that'll speed the process up a little. Okay. Maybe if I closed Outlook. Outlook can be a memory hog as most of you know. And I'll close OneDrive, another memory hog. All right, so and I'm still spinning. God help us. Okay, so anyway, my cursor was just blinking in there a second ago, so I was under the impression I could start typing things. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start typing in an address, and as I said earlier, I'm going to use the same address I was using a minute ago, only for purposes of it loading quickly. So I'm going to start to type in my address. It gives me all of the, across the country. This is across the country, folks. That's what's so cool about it. I'm going to go down to pair, uh, unit number 3D and I'm going to click on 3D. Notice how it loads all the rest of the information in there. I'm going to click on search. And again, like I told you, that's all I need to do on this page, okay? I'm going to click on search. And that's going to take me to my uh, information about this particular property. So here it is. Um, there's a lot you can do in here, some of which we are going to do, some of which you don't really need. Um, if you wanted to look at the history of the property, you would click on history. If you wanted to look at the uh, charts of the property, you know, what's happened with it over time as far as uh, appreciation, things like that. If you want to look at the refined values, so we might know something about the property that might change the value of it, then I would use refined value. And I'm going to show you some of these here uh, in the time we have left. Um, and then I'm going to have to do my comp analysis in order to get my uh, report. Okay, 
piece. So um, at least uh, if you don't do the comp analysis, then the report will, gener will, will create a generic report that doesn't include specific properties. And you and I both know that you know, this, is, this is one of those algorithms that, that you know, it's, it's uh, not like a pillow or Guglia or anything like that, but it is one of those algorithms that can't, it just can't replace you. There's nothing like your, you know, boots on the ground, your, your vision of things um, that a machine cannot replace it. It just can't. So that's why, you know, I always get a kick. I'm going to go to a, a, an appointment and the seller is going to be sitting there waving a pillow estimate for me, a, I don't know, a pestimate or whatever they call it. Um, and so, you know, for me, I know I'm going to have to have something to counteract that. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hard time convincing the seller that they need to price their property, uh, you know, more reasonably. Um, frequently, when they uh, meet me with that, um, the value is uh, almost a third more than the property is worth, which can be incredibly annoying, right? I mean, I, I want to sell the property. I'm not interested in just marketing and I want to sell it. And so if I start out too high, then I'm going to be working reductions the whole time and the sellers, and, and we had this happen. We had an attorney that we were working with and the attorney said, you know, he says, no, I got the pestimate here. And it says I'm worth, it was a four, I remember specifically, it says I'm worth 449. And uh, this is up in Vista. And uh, he says, so I want to start it at 469. <laughs> so I was like, boy, are you going in the wrong direction? I'm looking at 365. And so, you know, I'm 100,000 less. And I said, here's my, you know, my report. And this is a pretty, uh, you know, quantified report, a good report. Um, but boy, he was just, he was just determined, you know, I had that listing all the way up until the end of the year and then he had to sell it and he ended up selling it for, you know, what I told him it would sell for in the first place. So he could have saved himself. Well, he didn't have any payments to make. He could have saved himself four payments, right? And I was telling my client, how many more payments do you want to make? Okay. So let's take a look at my summary really fast. Um, so here's my address again. It's confirmed. Okay. It's pending. Well, it's, uh, as of today, it is closed. Um, so Interestingly enough, we put it on the market 749. Um, it actually closed last night special. Um, the RVM on it said that it was worth 743. I can tell you that we closed for 739. Uh, and uh, so, you know, the buyer will feel like they got a good deal by four grand and the seller will feel like they got a good deal because they only paid six something for it. So everybody's going to feel good. Now I can refine the values and I can create a comp analysis, but I'm going to show you the shortcut to that. So over here on the, on the left-hand side, again, it gives me the basic facts about the property. It was in the market for a total of 52 days. Um, my square footage is about 989, okay, consistent with the tax record. Remember, this grabs data from the tax record. My uh, RVM is my realtor valuation model, as opposed to what you know in your MLS. You've got your AVM, which is your um, agent uh, valuation or, uh, model. Um, and then again, I can go to zip forms and, and I can do property analysis for investors as well. So, what did it do over time? So, within the last month, it went up 51 grand. Um, within the last 12 months, it went up over 6.6%. I mean, if you know uh, Mission Beach, Pacific Beach, there's just not building any more of them and they're right on top of each other anyway. So, um, um, let me see here. Last sold price, they paid 654 for it uh, almost two years ago. So um, I remember that. So uh, they, they have a really good, this is a really neat little thing, using the RVM and pricing discussions. And if you click on this, it plays a video for you that goes through, you know, what that RVM looks like. And so at the risk of running over my own uh, statement here, this is pretty neat. It does explain um, the value of having that uh, uh, pricing done. So I'm going to let you you look at that on your own. There's no sense in us doing that uh, during this, what we're doing here. Um, but take a look at it. Um, photo view. So here's my photo view. It'll do a scrolling photo view. So um, our agent had professional pictures taken of the property. Um, and so that's what it's doing right now. It's scrolling through them. Look at all these pictures. Um, and I can make it go big screen by clicking on this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, obviously go one picture to the next. So uh, um, she did a really good job on that. I'm, I'm really proud of her on that. So uh, that being said, now I just got to get my screen back. Oops, where to go? Okay, get my screen back here. So a lot to do in there. Um, over here on the right, it talks about who the listing agent is. I can make this map bigger if I want to by clicking on bigger map. Um, Ashley Kelly's our agent, super gal. Um, I was the co-listing agent on it just because uh, we wanted, always wanted somebody to be able to get a hold of us. 
Um, this is what uh, the MLS does to our um, uh, website or our company name. It truncates it because it's so long. Um, then it's got our street address. This is all information that's just included um, by default. Nothing I can do to change all this. Um, here's the historical records for the property, the current record. Here's the, the previous MLS. Um, and then uh, Deidre, there's my SPN again. Um, and so all the way down here and I can compare historical records. I'll come back to that. Um, how this zip code compares. Um, over here on the left, by the way, this is uh, the remarks section that we wrote, Ashley and I wrote for the property. We always put in our remarks, the last sentence always says, please see supplement. And the reason is because so many people skip the supplement. Um, and so if I was creating this for a seller, I might add some notes here to say, you know, these are, are the historical photos for the property, you know, you've done some upgrades, things like that. So you can make, make nice little notes in here and those will print on your report. Um, how your zip code compares, this shows you the median estimated home value in that area is going to be 987000 uh, in all of San Diego. We're up around six hundred and twenty now. Um, California, about $60,000 behind that. Um, and then we look at the change in, in appreciation of the property. So um, the median sales price was eight forty four, dollars uh, and, uh, and it goes through all these numbers. So median public sales price, median listing price, 12-month uh, change in prices. So PB supposedly went down 2%. Uh, San Diego went up 3.8%, which is sustainable, right? We can't really do much more than than seven. You know, it's just not going to be sustainable. California went up 8.2. So, you know, all those outer reaches that are more affordable for people right now are, are seeing a pretty good uh, bonus right now. So how many days in the RPR? So this zip code is about 42. San Diego is about 40, um, which is, is kind of interesting. And I, if you were in my class the other day that I talked about the market, um, we, um, you know, we're looking at market times. We're looking at inventory being done in about four months. So if we don't start taking more listings, we're going to be out of houses to sell. So, um, okay, I showed you all that. Over here on the left-hand side, uh, back to that, I've got property notes. If there were any, I can add a note. I can put seller's net sheet in there. Um, here's the homeowner's facts. Here's the homeowner's name. Uh, they've taken the title as husband and wife. There's their address. Um, here are the facts about the property. You can change these if you know something that the program doesn't know. I would be careful about that um, because whatever change you make, it's not going to change the public record, but it is going to change the outcome of, of your uh, results of your valuation. So be sure that you know what you're doing. So for example, here it shows the public says that it's 9,839 foot uh, property, which is the HOA property. Now, if I go putting that in here, then I, I, I don't know what that's going to do to the data. So I just tend not to change anything and, unless it's something that just jumps out at me. Okay, so common roof. This is information from the MLS. So when I put this into the MLS, this is the, I'm sorry, when Ashley put this into the MLS, that's what you're seeing right here. You're seeing that data. Okay. All right, um, median estimated home value. Here's my numbers. On the right side, I've got my school districts. Don't you love it when you can count on somebody else to tell you what the school districts are so you're not sitting there going, well, I was told not to tell you what the school districts are because it'll be just my luck that you won't be in the school, you know, able to go to the school that's across the street. So, you know, that kind of thing. So I like it when we take these from our public information services, um, price change histories, uh, things like that. We were on the market the whole time at 749. Um, listing details. Um, so uh, she put in there, text the listing agent, lockbox, et cetera, et cetera. There was a 3D tour. She did a great job on that. She really dumped some money into that. That was a lot of work. Um, room details. So we always measure the room. So, so this is coming straight out of the MLS. Um, we always put the larger number first. It kind of gives the, you know, the impression the room is a little bit bigger. So she did a great job on that. I'm not here to critique her work, but uh, good job. Um, interior features that she checked, uh, exterior features. These are all the uh, pieces of information that she checked. Um, and uh, that's going to be giving my, and again, here's my schools. Um, and then based on the location, they come up with the data, what schools people go to. So I'm always, I don't care what the source is. I'm always really reluctant to quote schools. I know that in Carmel Valley, we've had some issues with uh, school districts being redone and, and things like that. And, and again, it'll be just my luck that uh, somebody will rely on something I said about schools. So that being said, 
Uh, here's my legal description of the property. Remember, it's never what uh, you think it is. Plat map, I like that feature. Click on that, get your plat map. Here's my tax information on the property. Here are my deed records. Linda's a deed nut, right? Linda goes in, my Linda, Linda Dryley goes in and pulls up the grant deed on all the properties just to know, you know, who, who really owns it. Um, we've been uh, surprised on more than one occasion, so it's not a surprise for us anymore, but a lot of times we'll find out that the, what we think is, you know, the, the owner of the property turns out to be somebody completely different. So that being said, I'm going to go back up to the top and then I'm going to go ahead. I want to go ahead and create a report. Okay. So, um, but, uh, before I do that, if I click on create a report, it's going to take me to this page, um, that I'm going to show you here. And this is the end page. Well, I want to be able to adjust the information before I get to that page, because this is just going to create the report, but it's going to create the report based on the information that I've given it. I don't need to play with history a whole bunch. I don't you know charts are nice. I'll click on charts. Um, that'll slow us down a little bit because then see, I got all these pretty graphics and stuff. Now, if your client likes charts and you're going to be the judge of that, then, you know, include your charts. And that's something I'm going to show you in a minute, how to include information and, and remove information before you do all of this. Okay. So, um, the, but charts are cool. People like charts. I can mesmerize anybody with a chart. Now, what about my refined value? So, uh, refined value is going to be really important to you, and that's because um, I'm going to I'm able to actually adjust the value of the property based on information that I might know. So I don't see anything in here that I would want to change. But let's say that uh, let's say I would change the rooms. Um, again, don't do it unless you know it for a fact. I'm going to say it's got six rooms now, and I'm going to click on Apply Changes and look what it does. It doesn't do it doesn't care about six rooms, so it didn't change the value at all. But what if I put in 25 rooms? Um, I might I might have to go to a different field to show you. Yeah, I'm going to have to show you something in a different example. So um, I'll delete that. Um, uh, but I might, you know, what happens if I've got a three bedroom now instead of a two bedroom? And the answer is it would actually, the three bedroom would be worth less. And the reason is because what my 989 square foot two bedroom is a lot more spacious than my 989 square foot three bedroom. Okay. So you can see that as I'm adding and subtracting things, I'm changing the valuation over here. Sometimes you'll have a property that has, you know, they've added a bathroom to it. So I might change the bathroom. I might apply the changes and look what a bathroom does. A bathroom raises the value by 58 grand. So increasing the bedrooms by a bedroom lowers it by 16, but increasing it by uh, a bathroom raises it by over almost 60. So I'm going to go hit restore original again, because I was just using that as an example to show you how to do it. Uh, when I get down to here, I can refine the value based on a home improvement. So now they're pretty specific about how they're doing that. And as you all know, my kitchen remodel is my best investment in my property. My bathroom remodel is my second best investment. So let's go ahead and take a look at a kitchen remodel. Uh, and we're going to call it a major kitchen remodel upscale. Um, and then they're going to ask us, when was it completed? So you see all this information in here, 30 linear square feet. So it's going to tell you, it's going to say, this is what we think an upscale remodel looks like. I'm going to say that it was done in uh, May of what year? I'm going to say May of last year. Um, so, oops, there's my face in the way again. Sorry. Uh, come on, get out of there. Okay, so I'm going to have to get rid of myself here. Move over. There we go. Where did it go? We lost it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go to May of 19. Um, how much did they spend on it? They spent $50,000 on it, okay? So now I want you to watch. I'm going to go up here a little bit. You see where the value is before I make the addition? Now I'm going to add it. And look what that $50,000 remodel did was it increased the value by $34,000. Folks, you need to tell your client that. Sometimes the money they spend is not going to give them the same return on their investment as just leaving it the way it is, right? And I do a lot of market data. I do a lot of... Uh, uh, testifying on, on market conditions in San Diego. And sometimes that one little bathroom remodel on a 980 square foot, 89 square foot condo isn't going to give the seller the return on the investment that they wanted it to give. 
Okay, so I'm gonna restore my original. I'm back to my 743-250. Now, what about needed improvements? So the same kind of thing applies. They're gonna be looking for what was the improvement they're gonna, that was needed, what was the cost, and then they're gonna to add to that. And so sometimes maybe my cost was 10 grand, but you know, if, if I do it, it might not increase the value of the property that much. Now, my part, my favorite part is right here, refine the value based on market and home conditions. And I like this part. So what's the local market? Does anybody think that we have a local, an average local market? Not a chance, right? It's gonna be higher than that. So as I slide my scale, that's gonna add $8,100 in value. Look at that, now I'm at 751. I'm starting to think I undersold this property. Home exterior, eh, comparable to the other ones. Home interior, yeah, about the same as the others. Lot size, yeah, about the same. View, about the same. Privacy, about the same. So the only thing I really have on this part here is to change my local market conditions. And then again, you know, it makes me look like uh, maybe I underpriced it a little bit. But remember, our original price was... Uh, um, seven hundred and forty nine thousand dollars okay that's that's what we had it on originally okay so I'm gonna restore all that to the original um, and now what I want to do is I want to go into my comp analysis I'm gonna click on my comp analysis and this is gonna be pretty important if you accept the default data you might have your your numbers may be skewed okay so remember you're the expert you're you're the market expert for that area and so you need to do your homework on it. You need to pull up uh, the rest of the information. So comp analysis, build an estimate, um, sales comparison analysis. They give you a good little drop down. Lots of help features in here, okay, that you really should take a look at. Um, and, and that'll explain that process for you. They have all kinds of trainings. Um, the problem is, you know, that for most of us, the first we learn of any of these things is sitting right in front of the client. So we, you know, take the time when you've got it. Uh, let's confirm the home facts. And again, we've already looked at that. So it's all good. I'm not changing anything. I'm going to go confirm it. And now look what that is doing. It is creating a running tally of things for me to do. So find comps. So it pulls up my find comps feature. And uh, from here, um, I'm not going to add a known property. I'm going to search the, the other comps that are already in there. And uh, Nadine question, is there a general rule on how much square footage you need in order to see an increase in value by adding a bedroom versus a decrease? Okay, Nadine, good question. So in this case, it's a condominium. So I'm not going to be increasing the square footage of the property because I'm just not going to be able to do that in a condominium. But if I have a house and I increase my square footage, say, by 400 square feet, like the size of a two-car garage, I'm probably going to have an appreciable um, increase in value. Can't do it in the condo because the HOA is going to have a fit, right? But what is the difference between a one bedroom that's 600 square feet and a two bedroom that's 900 square feet? I, know, I don't know. It's going to depend. And a lot of it is also going to depend on market. So that's why I like the program. It does one of the better jobs. It's not trying to sell you anything. Um, it does, <coughs> excuse me, it does one of the better jobs um, out there, certainly better than the, the you know, the pillows and the ghoulias that are all trying to sell your clients something else, okay? So now I know when I'm looking at my comps, and, and uh, Nadine, if I didn't answer your question, hit me again, okay? Um, I'm looking at condo, active for sale, pending, solds. Uh, maybe I want to look at um, public records as well. Let's do that. Um, down here, keywords, nah, I can't think of any. Within the last six months, I might want to change that to the last uh, three months. Most of our appraisers are only going back three months. Um, this has it as a one. I'm going to change it to a two. Uh, I have a two bathroom. I'm going to change that. Uh, and now I'm going to say, okay, search and let it come up with some numbers. So down here now, I've got two properties that we can use as sold comps and seven for use as comps that are for sale. So my for sale ones, of course, you know, eh, you know, but the same address, right? It's 2D, it's directly below us. Look at that, 269, or I'm sorry, 699. So, and it's been on the market almost as long as we have. Um, and then they have other properties in that same little area. I'm, I'm more inclined in my active, um, in my listings, I'm more inclined to use the ones that are um, uh, going to be uh, close uh, to this property. So I'm going to draw a shape. Now look over here. You see all these up here? I don't think they're the same comps as these down here. I'm okay using these, uh, but I'm not okay adding those. So let's go ahead and draw a shape. So we're going to draw a polygon, all right? 
I'm going to click on the polygon. I'm click here. I'm going to go to here, just like in your MLS, to here, to here, and then to there. Do I want to search in that area? Absolutely. Click on search in that area. Boom. And now what does it do? So now it changed quite a bit of information. It gave me two properties that are sold, okay? Again, two of them within that geographic grid, all right? And so I'm gonna like both of those. I'm gonna add them to my comp list. Notice they weren't over here until I added them. I like them both, okay? Then I'm gonna look at my, my for sale. The one for pending, for sure, I like that one, right? I mean, that one's a pending one and that's at uh, 995. Um, the other two for sale, let's ignore those, okay? And only, you know, not that it means anything, but I don't really don't know what their value is. In this case, here's the, the one that's directly below our unit. We were 3D, they're 2D, uh, directly our unit. Can I use that? I don't know, I might have a couple of good comps already, okay? So then I'm gonna update my valuation. It's gonna give me a review of my comp analysis. Um, do I need to adjust my comps? That's always interesting too. So if I click on my adjust my comps, I'm just going to show you a lot like an appraiser's grid. Okay. And I can remove properties. I can, uh, I also have a little sliding scale down here. I can change data. Um, I can make it uh, worth, you know, how does this property compare to the subject property? I can do all that. Okay. Um, I'm not going to mess with it right now because I've got four minutes. Um, down here, I've got my, uh, you know, value range of this would be somewhere between 250 and 943. That's pretty helpless. Um, searching for my comps, my average is 633.5. Uh, review the comp analysis, it says 633.5. Um, again, I'm gonna create my report. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create my report. I could have cleared it and started all over again, but let's go ahead and create a report because I wanna show you this really fast in the time that we have left. Since I am doing this for a seller, I would probably click on the seller's report. I could also, we normally in our office always do the property report, okay? Um, and, and so uh, if I wanna see a sample of it, I click on sample and then this shows you what the samples look like, and then you can scroll from page to page, see what they look like. They're pretty cool. No matter what you do, they're gonna be pretty cool. Seller's report's gonna be about 75 pages long. I, I happen to know that, but let's go down here. I wanna show you a couple of things. Notice here on the right, her picture won't show up. Yours will, okay? This is just an example. Over here on the right, you check the boxes that you want to have included in your report. So whatever you have in here will be there. I like page numbers. Um, I go down here, this is what I do. I go to personalize my report. I click the name and I put down uh, uh, Sharon and Bob um, uh, Winkler. I'm gonna pick on Mark. Okay, so Sharon and Bob Winkler. I always put the, the lady's name first and you know, anyway, it's just my thing. I'm gonna do a, a copy. And then I'm going to go down here and I put prepared exclusively for and then paste and that's Sharon and Bob Winkler exclamation mark and I'm going to show you why I do that in just a second scrolling down here I never email it to myself I always create a PDF so that I can control it as it goes out and I know what it looks like and I don't have to come back and run it again okay all right, so I always do a PDF. Over here on the right-hand side, I've got my information as it's going here along with my logo as it's gonna appear. I can view my full profile, go back to all that again, or I can just go down here, I can click on run report, okay? So this is gonna be good, our timing is really good. So this says my seller's report is number 10 in line. That means there are nine people ahead of me that are doing, a, doing a, an RPR right now. It could be the nine, you know, there's quite a few people on this call, but um, it, it could be all of you, right? <clears throat> or some of you at least, okay? But in fact, how many of you are on this call? Um, Okay, quite a few. All right, so it could be everybody there. So anyway, I'm running my report. Now, while I'm running it, I get this little orange button up here. One report has been requested. It's being generated. So I don't have to worry about that. I can go on and go do other stuff because for my purposes, it's running it in the background and it's going to go ding-a-ling as soon as it's ready. The other way to tell is I go up here on the left-hand side and I see that I've got a report uh, that is uh, pending, right? Um, nine minutes it says so it's going to take a couple of minutes um, i can also scroll down and pull up uh, i don't have any of the past versions it's been a couple of months since i ran that property so uh, but uh, let me just show you for uh, an example i'm going to pull up one i've already run uh, let's let's look at uh, uh, let's look at uh, let's look at dunnigan 
I'm going to pull up Don again. The reason is because I don't want to pull up somebody else's information at this time. So I'm pulling up what the report would look like. Um, it's going to ask me where I want to put it. I'm going to put it on my desktop uh, for now. We usually save them in the file. We have a file on every property that we've done. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Um, again, remember these reports are only good for 30 days. I'm going to go ahead. It says I'm almost done. I'm going to click on it and uh, boom, up it comes. Uh, you saw a little preview of a class. I'm going to be doing it at uh, one o'clock, which will be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing uh, the RPA again. Um, so here's done again. Here's what it looks like. There's my logo because that's what it was at the time. Um, there's the, the buyer's names. There's the property address. This is what the report looks like. So remember what we did earlier, and it's not exactly what we did uh, today, but I've got my name. Everything is in there. My picture, current photo, my license numbers, company emails, telephone numbers, street addresses, all that stuff prepared exclusively for Dave and Aaron or Aaron and Dave, um, whichever. Uh, then I get uh, pictures of the property. This was a big one, 274. Um, so uh, this is pictures of the property. It was for sale at that time. It's currently pending. Um, and then it gives me all my admonitions in here to make sure that everybody understands that, uh, you know, we're not doing anything crazy. So here's some stuff you're already familiar with. Um, the good news that I like too, is that it gives you all the extended facts about the property. You know, does it have air conditioning, things like that, according to the listing agent. And they have property photos. Now in this case, this is a brand new build. So it's not going to have, uh, shouldn't have any historical photos. This is out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I say nowhere. Twin Falls, if you've ever been there, it's really pretty. Um, but this shows you property history for that property. Remember it was land before and now it's, uh, um, being converted to a house. So, so that's kind of what it looks like. You should uh, play around the program. As I said earlier, you can't break anything. Don't worry about it. Um, we have heat maps that we generate to tell you what the market's looking like in that area. Um, and I apologize for the internet again, but here's Twin Falls. You can see 12 month changes in estimated values. So um, so as it's going up in value, it's getting, they're getting darker and darker. So you can see there's a little bit of a cluster right here. Um, there's some other places that just no movement. There's no houses out there. I mean, this is really literally, um, Twin Falls is a very small community. Okay. Uh, question, uh, cannot see what you're talking. Oh gosh. Oh, thank, thank you for telling me. Oh gee, seriously. Um, can't see the report, James. There it is. Uh, where's the report? There it is. I'm sorry. It did a pop up on me. Okay. Thank you, folks, for letting me know. I'll take you back up to the main screen up here. By now, that report's probably ready. But here's what the result looked like for the other property that we had just done. Um, it has all of our comp, all my contact information. That's why I said it's important that when you fill out the settings page that you have all your information be current. Okay. There's a picture of the property. Um, GPS is actually incorrect on this property. It shows it being across the street from a baseball field, but it's really a couple blocks away from it. Um, of course, I wouldn't say that to the client, except the client's my sister. So um, here are my home facts, just like we just looked at a minute ago. Everybody can see that, all right? Um, and then uh, extended home facts, nice things about the property that it might not have otherwise known, like it's 7,928 square feet. Um, Photos, they'll typically have historical photos if it had been listed before. And again, I can make that decision when I'm going to print the listing as to whether or not I want to print the, the photos from before. And so in this case, I didn't have any comps. There weren't any, um, but on our map would have shown comps if when we ran mission, it would have shown the map that we saw earlier. Okay. Um, as I find myself going over again, property history, um, property reports, um, again, there's nothing you can do to break this program. There's my uh, estimated home values maps. It shows that the darker is the, the, the higher uh, home values. Okay, um, obviously big chunks of land out there. Um, then my heat map showing the 12 month change in estimated value. So the dark areas are gonna be the, the most appreciative properties. Um, value per square foot, all these things, if they're interesting. If you see something that you're like, is it in the flood zone? You see something you don't want included in re the report, what you're going to do is, I'm going to take me back to that screen. And what you're going to do over here is you're going to go to your report, you're going to go more details, and then you're just going to eliminate what those are. 
So for example, you don't want uh, the uh, mortgage records, you can uncheck the box and then it will uncheck it. It won't uh, include it in your report. Or if you don't want to see the photos, if you think it's going to take up too many pages, some people don't like to print these things and I probably wouldn't, but um, you know, th oh, now the report's ready. Now we can look at it. Um, and so that's the way to do all that. But that's why I like pulling this, uh, you know, pulling up this sample. Um, again, we usually use the property report. I'm going to cancel that because uh, we're way over time. I'm sorry. Um, got it. Okay. So, but you see what I'm saying? I can eliminate certain things uh, when I'm on this page. Um, again, uh, historical photos, it seems that people like to remove those, but um, you know, that's going to be your call, whatever you don't want to have included. Again, the report that we almost always run is always going to be our property report. We like that one a lot. Um, uncheck the elements you wish to hide. You know, that's, uh, that's how it is. So, uh, any questions about any of that? Uh, we've got other kinds of reports, obviously, the property flyer, which is good. A mini property report would be if you were going to actually print something. I always recommend you take the report with you on a tablet or something that you can show them really quick. But if you start printing these reports, I mean, there's 75 pages of color ink. Um, you know, you're going to be spending some money on that. So uh, unless you're trying to impress your client, which you could always do that too. But uh, market activities, neighborhood reports, school reports, you know, remember what I said again, you want it to be somebody else quoting that information. So uh, uh, any other questions about any of that? Um, we covered it really fast. An hour is just not enough time. Um, but um, I'm happy to help you. Obviously, you know, our classes never end, right? I mean, you can always send me an email. Um, and I'm happy to, to uh, help you in, in whatever you're looking at. Um, let me pull this up here. There's my email address again. Um, and uh, later on this afternoon at one o'clock, I'll be doing the RPA again, and I've already created the whole thing for you. If you attend any of my classes, this one's an exception, but if you attend any of my classes, then um, you know that SDAR will send you all the material that I have used in preparing for the class and things like that. So this afternoon's will be fairly uh, a fair amount of material. Um, yesterday's class that we did on uh, the uh, BRE, there was a lot of really good information in there. So if you want a copy of that, send an email to education at sdar.com and they will be more than happy to uh, send you all of the material that came from that class. You know, we're proud of it. We want you to have it. Um, and, uh, and, and so that's kind of where we are now. My screen's going to be crazy. This is what I I get for trying things on live. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions about any of that? I'm going to go ahead and uh, wish you all a wonderful day today. And uh, hopefully I'll get to see you again at uh, o'clock. And if not, I will see you next Tuesday. Um, thank you all for being here. And uh, again, I, I uh, whoops, got one more in there. Oh, thank you, Deidre. Yeah, I appreciate your venturing through the yeah, techno jungle. So listen, it's not that tough. Now, if you get stuck, Give me a give me a call or send me an email and then we'll just arrange a time. We'll get online together, okay? And we'll I'll show you how it works, okay? So we'll go through it and I'll be able to answer any questions for you. So that's one of the reasons I work with SDAR is because you know I want to make sure that you're taken care of, not uh, getting rushed through a presentation, okay? So everybody have a great day today, and then again I hope I get to see you later on today, and uh, I wish you all the very best uh, of your day. Take care.